Hi, I'm Steve Borey, and I'm the author of The American Casino Guidebook. And I'm Matt Borey, and I'm the editor of The American Casino Guidebook. And our video today is with our guest, Spencer Music, and it is uh, four tips to increase your comps uh, while playing video poker. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I am Steve Borey from The American Casino Guidebook, along with Matt Borey. And joining us today is Spencer Music. Hi, Spencer. How are you doing? Doing really well. Thanks for having me, guys. Excited to be here. Good. Now, what we're going to talk about now, I had met Spencer a year, uh, was about two years ago, and actually I met him in Macau, China. And uh, I was planning a visit there with my wife, didn't know anything about the place, and he was gracious enough to meet us there and give us the tour. And uh, we did a video on it, so if you want to see it, it's all about the, how uh, the gambling in Macau is different than it is in the United States. Over there, they have, uh, the big game is Baccarat. And it was interesting, there is no uh, uh, video poker over there, absolutely none. And, uh, but Spencer, you like to play video poker and you're gonna give us some tips for what you found out to, uh, to increase your comps, but you're not a professional player and you don't claim to be. So you're a recreational gambler who's trying to get an advantage. So give us a little history on, on your video poker play. Sure. Um, so, uh... Like you mentioned, I, I started gambling in Macau, and my first trip to Las Vegas wasn't until um, I, I had been going to Macau uh, during my time uh, in China. And um, so I, I at first uh, went to a downtown casino and was like, oh, I think I'll, I'll try to play jacks or better, and just absolutely, you know, uh, lost my shirt and uh, thought, you know, the American Casino Guide channel was really good on teaching me how to play Baccarat, so I might as well look up their video poker um, videos and then just kind of went down the rabbit hole. Um, I, I enjoy the challenge of it, and um, I enjoy uh, getting free rooms, uh, free meals. Um, so, uh, you know, although it's the case that, you know, casinos don't necessarily love video poker players, there are some ways that you can game the system and still um, get get more comps um, out of your video poker play. So I'm excited to um, share uh, the, the things that I've learned over the course of my uh, couple of years playing video poker. Okay, now before we get into your tips, one thing I wanted to do for the people who don't understand why video poker is really a, a good game to play and why it's an exploitable game to play in the casino, Matt's going to give us some tips on that point. Yeah, so the main difference between slots and video poker is that if you look at a slot machine, you never know uh, what it's set to pay back because uh, it's all hidden. But with video poker, it has to be based on one 52-card deck. And the only way that they can change the payback of the game is by changing how much they pay you for each hand. So you can look right at a video poker machine and see exactly what it's set to pay back. And also there's only one correct way to play any of your hands anytime you're dealt any of the combinations of cards. So uh, there's skill involved. And uh, the way it works is that some casinos know that some people are bad players and some people are good players. And they know that a majority of the people that sit down and play these machines are not gonna be playing perfectly so that they'll, they'll tend to uh, comp at a, a slightly better rate uh, than if you are playing perfectly. So like a 9.6 jacks or better has a 99.54% payback. The house only has a half a percent edge. That's if you play perfectly. So the casino knows not everybody's playing perfectly and a majority of the people aren't going to play perfectly. So they're going to comp you a little better uh, than that half a percent edge that they have. And uh, so we're going to talk about some ways to sort of uh, exploit that and get it as high as possible to get as much comps as you can while you're playing. And uh, so, Spencer, what is your first tip here? My first tip is to play only in casinos that value the business of video poker players by offering good games and better comps. Um, so if you go to the, you know, any of these big casinos on the Las Vegas Strip, um, all of them have video poker and, you know, depending on how nice the casino is, some may have the good paying games. It may be in high denominations, but what you have to ask yourself, you know, in these big strip casinos are the video poker players who are coming in there. Is that a big part of their business model? Is that a big source of their revenue? You know, uh, strip casinos that cater to mainly people from outside of Las Vegas 
um, are really, you know, betting on, you know, folks just coming in for a weekend, putting a hundred bucks in a slot machine or throwing some money down on the roulette table. Um, video poker is not a huge part of their business model and video poker players are not a kind of player that they're going to spend a lot of time and a lot of money in the term in terms of comps trying to attract. Um, so a few examples um, that, that I um, would cite uh, is casinos in Las Vegas that do value video poker players are places like um, the South Point um, stations casinos other than the Palms which is you know station sort of higher end property and uh, in downtown Las Vegas uh, the the Four Queens. Um, and, you know, these, these kinds of, you know, they're at different levels um, and have, you know, different things available in terms of game selection. Um, but, you know, for a place, say, like the South Point, you know, that they cater mainly to Las Vegas locals. And Las Vegas locals know that video poker is a good game to play. So a casino like the South Point is going to offer incentives in terms of, you know, comps for uh, an ounce of coin in that might not get you noticed on a strip casino. And, um, and just better game selection, right? Um, so it's, it's important to find those casinos that value the business of video poker players. And really, if, if you don't do that, then none of the other tips, um, none of the other tips really matter. So uh, these tips that you're talking about is mainly for Vegas. Outside of Vegas, I feel like this might be a little harder to do uh, or find. But one thing that we suggest is if you're planning a trip anywhere, be it uh, Vegas or anywhere else in the country, uh, we have a great website that we use as a resource when we're planning a trip. It's vpfree, the number two, dot com. And what you can do is you can go there and they'll, they have all the games listed. They'll show you what the best games in the casino are. And they also have a feature where they will uh, list um, the uh, stats about the players club, like how much coin in you have to do, because uh, one thing that uh, many players might not understand is that there's some casinos where um, you have to put the coin in, say it's like $2 coin in on the slot machines is one point. Um, but if you're playing video poker, some of them are obscenely high, like $20 is a point. I've seen 50 or $100 is a point for video poker. Or even if, if they'll have it better on the uh, bad pay tables, but on the good video poker pay tables, the full pay games. Uh, it can be up to fifty or a hundred dollars a point. So definitely, even even just because you found a casino that has good games, you might want to uh, check the players' club stats there to make sure that they uh, value, like you said, value the play of a video poker player. Right, and and so if you uh, if you go to say a casino like the South Point, you know you will find um, that uh, they treat coin in, whether it's for slots or video poker exactly the same. Um, there, there's no difference. In it. It's a dollar a point. Um, uh, and then they, they offer multipliers some days. But now, so that's really good for video poker players, right? If the casino is for points purposes, considering video poker the same as slots, that's great for a video poker player because slots is a much higher household. Uh, the converse of that is if you're a slots player, you want to avoid those kind of casinos because if you're a slots player, you want, you know, to go to a casino that values slots players and that, that gives them more comps. Um, but for video poker players, uh, a good thing to look for is um, uh, the, the rate redemption on video poker being the same as slots. And usually, not always, but usually that's something that you can find on the casino website uh, as well. Now, one last thing before we move on to point two that I, I, I wanted to point out here. Sometimes people play at local casinos where they have a choice of maybe two or three local casinos within a short driving distance. So now outside Las Vegas, generally video poker payback percentages are not as good. So what happens if you, you don't have a good place to play? How do you decide among the three places? Let's say you had three, three, three places to play and they all had bad video poker or, all, or they all had relatively bad comps if you're a video poker player. What do you do in a case like that? Thoughts? Um, so I, I, would, I would be conflicted there. So I wouldn't play in those kinds of casinos at all. Um, it's against my religion. Um, but I, if, if you must, you know, if you want to go to a local place that has video poker and you just have to scratch that itch, then I would try to find the least bad option. And you know, th that's gonna be different for every player in terms of how far away it is. And you know, the, um, uh, the, the, the game selection, do you know the games that are there? 
you know, I don't think if, if you have a casino that's near you and, um, you know, a lot of these places now will only offer high volatility games like, say, Double Double Bonus. And, you know, it's going to be hard to get to the long run with those kinds of games if they're not offering the full pay version and if you're not getting some, you know, something decent in the way of comps. So um, the easy answer and I think the easiest solution is just to not play video poker at those casinos and maybe look at, you know, um, a lot of these casinos have better options, uh, say with blackjack or, you know, I would, I would look at another game would be my tip there. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I should point out is we said bad video poker, but I think even the worst video poker I've ever seen is like six, five jacks or better. And that's what 99, 98, 95, isn't it? like 95% payback. And I mean, even if you're playing quarter, uh, jacks, six, five jacks or better, that's a 95, around 95% payback. Uh, that's still going to be way better than most of the quarter slot machines you'd be playing or the penny slot machines. So just because it's bad video poker doesn't mean it's a bad bet. It's still probably much better than playing any of the slot machines in the casino. I, yes. I, I, I would add that caveat good, there. Yeah, good point. But, but, but just do keep in mind, though, that the strategies are different for these uh, lesser pay tables. So you can't use 9-6 jacks or better strategy on, say, 6-5. Um, but that also you'll you'll need more bankroll um, to play these uh, to to play these inferior games um, mm -hmm. because of the higher household. So th those are things to keep in mind. And I think the best tip would just be find the casinos that'll give you good comps, give you free rooms in Las Vegas, Reno, Atlantic City, and just stick to playing video poker there. Okay, so let's uh, move on to point two. So my second point is to select the right games that have the highest chance of getting you to the long term. Um, and so that means lower volatility. If you do any reading on video poker, you'll see this word volatility brandied about a lot. The reason for that is that it is just as important to uh, the long-term expectation a player can get as expected return is. Um, so uh, a couple of examples of uh, low volatility games are games like nine, six jacks or better and eight, five bonus poker. They have a higher chance, if you're playing um, a good strategy, they have a higher chance of hitting that expected return or close to it um, than a higher volatility game like Double Double Bonus. And it's, I mean, uh, gosh, I can't even keep up with the variations of Double Double Bonus. There, and I think they're up to like quadruple uh, double bonus now. It's getting crazy. Yeah, and, and the more top heavy that pay table is, the higher volatility. Um, so, you know, these games don't have, um, these games aren't great if you're trying to generate comps because you're going to need, you're going to have a lot more swings and streaks, both winning and losing, and you'll need a bigger bankroll and a lot more time um, to get closer to that expected return. Um, and Deuces Wild is probably somewhere in between these two. And uh, that's actually a, a, another good one to learn, even though it's slightly higher volatility than Jacks are Better. Um, the advantage to games like Deuces Wild are the, is that the strategies are actually quite easy um, to learn. So um, if, you, if you have a casino that, that has a good Deuces Wild game, that can often be um, a, another good one to hit uh, for these purposes. But you want to skew towards lower volatility games if you are trying to get comps. Um, yeah, the only, the only issue I have with the Deuces Wild is that uh, sometimes the uh, going from one pay table to another, the uh, strategy does change quite a bit. Like uh, going from full pay deuces wild, you don't even keep a two pair. You go down to Illinois deuces, you do. So it, I, I, I enjoy playing deuces wild. It's fun because it's, 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 it's like a happy medium. It's, it's got a little bit of volatility, so you can still get those high payoffs, but it's not quite as bad as uh, the double bonus and all that. Right. And for any of our viewers that are not uh, too familiar with um, – video poker what spencer was talking about is normally on games like uh bonus poker or jacks are better if you get a uh two pair uh it pays double your money double whatever you're betting however on the uh, more volatile games like double double bonus and higher than that it only pays even money so you're not in and, and two pair is a very uh common hand that happens very often in the game uh but what they do is to make up for uh shorting you on the two of a kind they are the two pair they pay you much much more for the four of a kind at the top of the machine which is the the harder the hand is the higher it is at the pay table so that's why spencer said the top heavy game so i mean like there's like these double double triple double 
the higher the uh, number in the name is, the more volatile it is. So the more money you get for uh, the, all these special uh, four of a kinds, like four aces with a kicker or something, there's some that will even pay as much as a Royal Flush does uh, for getting one of those. But like he said, it's all of the pay, uh, the pay table of the game is tied into the higher, more difficult hands, like the four of a kind. And if you uh, have a session and you don't never get a four of a kind, you're going to have a bad day. Right. Uh, I, I want to point out here now, years ago, I used to play, um, always used to play Jackson Bread. I used to go to, to Las Vegas with my friend Marvin and we'd go partners on, the, on video poker. And uh, really never played much. So he said, oh, well, let's play full pay deuces wild. And I think back then Orleans had it. It used to be a lot easier to find full pay deuces wild. It's, it's hard to find it now. It's but we, awesome. we, we were playing quarter and uh, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world because we, every once in a while we'd hit four deuces and we were just having fun and we'd play like four hours and uh, thought it was the greatest game in the world. And then we went to another casino, the Reserve, and never got four of a kind and got completely crushed and, and lost like $1,500 on, on quarter video poker. It was crazy how, how bad it was. But yeah, so, so you have to get those hands that are, that are kind of rare. Uh, and now like four aces is really rare, but, but four deuces, uh, you know, well, I guess it's just as rare as four aces. But, but um, you know, it depends again on the pay table. But people need to understand that, that it's hard to get those rarer hands. And like you said, you're going to need a, a bigger bankroll to last out those periods when you, you don't get those good hands and, and you're depleting your bankroll. And, and, and one last thing I wanted to say, and I, when I went to Las Vegas, it seemed the most common game that everybody played was double-double bonus poker. I, I never quite understood it. I guess they liked the thrill of it. But, but we spoke to uh, Linda Boyd, who wrote a book about uh, video poker, and we would discuss video poker with her. And she would say watch, uh, playing uh, Jacks or Better was like watching paint dry. She, she just found no thrill whatsoever in it and, and refused to play it. And I think she double double bonus was was her game. So people like these volatile games, but it's fine if you like it. But just understand what can happen if you don't hit those hands. You're you're going to lose your bankroll much faster. So uh, keep it in mind. Yeah, and and another bankroll consideration is that you know um, I I have the bankroll to play jacks or better for dollar credits, five dollars a hand. Um, but my bankroll doesn't even approach what I would need to play double double bonus for uh, dollar credits. So also keep um, keep the credit um, value that you're playing um, in in mind as well. And the advantage to jacks are better. Like yes, it is great watching paint dry. Um, but when I play at the four queens, I play exclusively almost a dollar jacks are better, and I generate a ton of comps because they um, give uh, it's I think eight eight dollars a point, and so you'll rack up points quickly, and they have a great redemption rate. So when I'm enjoying my free uh, you know two hundred dollar steak dinner, I'm not necessarily thinking, oh man, that was such a boring game. Um, so you know it just it's it's a matter of perspective you can get used to it um i tend to listen to music or you know listen to a podcast while i'm playing jacks are better um, but yeah some people really don't like it and um so it's it's a consideration uh to keep in mind and one one other thing i should just add is that if you like like we said earlier if you go to that website vp32 number com, uh they'll you can look up any casino in the country and it'll tell you exactly what the best game is in that casino so that, that's a feature they have as well. So if you're planning a trip or even, even if you go to a, a casino you go too often, if you just want to make sure that you're playing the best game that they have in that casino, go ahead and go there. And it'll, it has a, a whole table with, it has the, the list, uh, the game name of the game listed, the payback of the game. And then it has a short little description over on the right. That'll, it, it says like exactly where in the casino to find it. It'll say like to the right of the players club, there's stand up machines, or it'll say it's a bar top machine somewhere else. So, you know, it's, it's a good website to go to just to make sure that because there every once in a while that you'll find there will be a machine hiding in a casino that you had no idea was there. I've, I've had that happen. I've looked up on VP free too, just because I was uh, looking, planning a trip and noticed that one of my local casinos had a good game I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so let's uh, go uh, number, number three. three. What is your, what is your tip number three? So my, my tip number three, I think, is the most um, the, the most important of these three. 
Um, and that is to play an appropriate strategy level for whatever game that you have selected to play. Now, with every video poker hand, there is only one correct way to play it. Um, but for most games, you know, that perfect level of play is really difficult. Um, for the variations of Deuces Wild, it's impossible, right? And the, and the books that, you know, um, you have to write an entire book to cover the true advanced or perfect strategy for um, Deuces Wild. So it's important that for whatever game you've selected to play, that you uh, pick a strategy level that you can implement well, um, that you can implement quickly and accurately. Um, because if you're not playing accurately, you're going to lose your shirt eventually in the long run anyway. Um, and so I'll, I'll actually give a little bit of a story. I know you guys like gambling stories on the channel. Um, I was at the, at the South Point on my last trip to Las Vegas and uh, sitting about two machines down from this guy who was, you know, chain smoking and cursing and just getting really angry at the, at, at, at the game. And also about every other hand, he was, you know, looking at his strategy card. And, you know, he, th that kind of player can't expect to be generating a lot of coin in or comps because he was trying to play. So, you know, I, I eventually looked over and I was like, you know, what, what, what's going on, man? And he's like, the strategy is just too hard. And he was actually playing jacks or better, um, but he hadn't studied the lower levels of strategy first and gotten proficient in them before moving up to the advanced level. So he was just playing too slowly and getting frustrated and and not having a good time right and the the main point of going to a casino be it for comps or otherwise is, is to enjoy yourself so for whatever game that you've selected to play you need to find a strategy level that's workable um, the advantage to jacks are better is that the perfect strategy for jacks are better while there are some uh, penalty cards and you know rare exceptions to consider there actually aren't that many compared to other video poker games so perfect play for jacks or better is within the grasp of most, you know, most players who are willing to put in the time. I am not a, a math genius and uh, by any stretch of the imagination, I just trust the math that other people have done. Um, but you kind of have to scaffold your way up to the more advanced strategies. So start with the easy ones and then, you know, go intermediate. But you just have to make sure that you know your strategy well and preferably you should be able, you know, like jacks are better, I can play perfectly without a strategy card. And that should really be your goal. Um, but if, if you can't get there, then try to get to the highest level of strategy that you can, um, that you can still play proficiently. All right, now, now one thing people need to understand is that with video poker, and when you talk about a strategy, there's always only one mathematically correct way to play your hand in, in any given situation. So, and, and uh, the way that that's arrived at is computer simulations, and they do, they do the math and say there's an expected value if you play your hand all these different ways, and whichever gives you the highest expected value, that's the way you're supposed to play your hand. Now, there is video poker software training programs that you can buy, and you can use those to practice your game, and I'll tell you when, when you make a mistake. And now, now some, they won't let you print out a strategy chart, but some will. So, and now we sell them on our website. If you go to our website, americancasinoguidebook.com, and you go up into uh, how to play, you'll see buy video poker software. So there's two that we sell there, and uh, we sell them at a discounted price. And, and what you should try and do, there might be other websites where you can go and practice on your own, but, but what you want to do is use video poker software training program to learn how to play your hands properly in any given situation. It'll warn you if you make a mistake. And then uh, you can use strategy charts, which you can either print out from the video poker software. So on our website, we have free video poker strategy charts that you can print out, no cost. And those are for uh, uh, nine, six jacks or better. And I think there's one there for eight, five jacks or better. You can print those out bring them with you into the casino and nobody really sees you there. But what you need to do is you need to know, you want to try and get the simpler hands so you know automatically what to do. But the harder hands where it's, you know, you got a choice and it, it's a very small fractional difference either way, then you can look at the strategy chart. But that's what you need to do. It's best to practice so you, you know how to play the good, the easy hands properly. Got a tougher hand, pull out the strategy chart and use it. Yeah, and the only other the only other thing I'll add is uh, Spencer sort of touched on it, but if you 
Like, yeah, if you bring in a strategy chart to the casino, if you don't know how to, uh, if it's a hand you don't know how to play, you can just glance at the strategy chart to figure out how to play the hand. But if you're doing that every five hands, every 10 hands, you're not gonna be getting nearly as many hands in an hour. And because the more hands you get in, the more hands you play, the more comps you're gonna get. So if you're uh, looking at your, having to glance down at your strategy chart every minute or two, you, you might only be getting in two, 300 hands an hour. Uh, if you're playing fast and you know what you're doing and you never have to look at your strategy chart, you can get in eight, 800, 1,000 hands an hour. But also keep in mind that the faster you play, the more likely you are to make a mistake. So even though you think you know the strategy, if you start cranking through it, you start cranking out hands, it's a lot more likely that you're going to make a mistake as well. So you kind of want to, you want to find a balance there. You want to be able to play uh, fast, but not too fast. You want to be able to play as fast as you can without making any mistakes. Right. And so on, on my end, you know, since I am not, uh, my sort of intellectual skill set is not geared towards video poker. You know, I, it took me, you know, practicing an hour a day. Uh, it's just like exercising or anything else. You know, it's, it's if you have to develop the habit of, of practicing and constant reinforcing um, and, you know, with, with a game like Jacks are better, you know, now that I've learned it to the advanced level, I don't really have to do that anymore. I just, before I go to Las Vegas, play for a couple of hours to, to make sure that I'm, I'm still sharp. Um, but for some games, you know, like double, double bonus, it's just a constant uh, reinforcement. Uh, double bonus is probably the most complex. Um, so just sort of know the ins and outs of whatever game you've selected to play and know which strategy level makes, makes the most sense um, from a comp perspective. And I, I, I want to say, Matt and I, we, we don't play uh, <clears throat> double bonus or double double bonus games. We, we pretty much stick to uh, well, once in a while deuces, but mostly uh, jacks are better or bonus poker. But for people that are just learning this, just learning about this and how this all works, I, I mean, we all started the same way. We, we didn't know it was a little foreign to us, but, but we practiced. And, and we got better at it. So, so if you if you want to learn more about video poker, you know, uh, take the time, maybe get a video poker software program, or maybe just print out those strategy charts. And, and as you go along with it, it'll it'll become easier and easier, and you'll know what to do. So it's not that hard. And initially, it may be a little strange, but uh, you'll get used to it and get better at it. And I will, I will have, I do have to add that it's the, the, the programs themselves are very easy to use. Growing up, uh, Steve has always had them on the computers. I'm pretty sure I was playing video poker on those uh, programs before I was driving a car. So it's there. Don't be intimidated. You can, you can buy them and they're very easy to figure out. And but I think, it's, yeah. sorry. I was going to say, it's a good investment. Um, you know, it's $50 is I think the most expensive one and probably the best mm -hmm. one. And, you know, if you're playing for dollars, you'll bet that in 10 minutes. So, you know, it's the, the software is an important investment if you're a video poker player. You, you, you got to do it. Yeah, I think the, the cheap one is $25. The only thing is you can't print out the strategy cards, but, it, it, but it'll teach you what you need to know. And Matt, I was going to point out that I think we were playing Doom before you ever played video poker. You were sitting on my lap playing Doom. Yes, that's yes. true. Okay. All right, so we got uh, one left, Spencer. What's your last tip here? My last tip is to learn to cultivate a relationship with a casino host um, in, uh, in a way that's realistic, given your level of play. This one's more subjective. It's going to be different for different casinos. Um, but even if you're just a quarter player, you would be surprised, number one, how much coin in you can actually generate just playing quarters if you're playing fast enough and proficiently enough. But that too, you know, provided you've followed the first tip and found a casino that does value video poker players, um, that, you know, uh, the right casino will give, you know, comps, free rooms um, to quarter players. Um, and so uh, you want to be able to try and generate the kind of coin in that would get a host attention. Now, you don't want to play just, you don't want to play a level that um, is not comfortable for you psychologically and for your bankroll. Um, but if you are, you know, generating, say, you know, five, six, seven thousand dollars of coin in a day at a downtown property like the D or the Four Queens, um, you would be surprised. And, uh, you know, host will seek you out, uh, especially now since we're in an economic slump. Um, casinos are offering way more um, in, in the way of, of free rooms and reaching out to, you know, hosts or reaching out to players that maybe wouldn't have gotten contacted before. 
So that host relationship um, you know, depends on the casino and what level of player you are. Um, but anywhere off strip or downtown outside of the Golden Nugget, the Golden Nugget is essentially just a strip casino that happens to be downtown. But any of those other downtown properties, um, if you're a solid quarter video poker player, um, and it might you might not get an email from a host on the first trip, but if you're a you know five six thousand dollars point in a day, um, you uh, you'll you'd be surprised. Um, you don't necessarily have to be this huge high roller uh, to get a host at some of these smaller and off strip casinos. And uh, so one thing I'll add here is that while while you you do uh, if you want to talk to a host. There's it really two. You got to one a find a casino like you said that values the video poker players and the lower rollers, which mm-hmm. does happen. And b you got to make sure it's a casino you actually like because just because you have a host calling you, if it's a if it's a casino you don't enjoy that you they you don't like any of the amenities they have, you don't like their hotel, you don't like their restaurants, it's going to be kind of pointless. You might as well uh, pick it up and uh, mosey on down the road and find a different one. But uh, like you said, you can either wait for a host or uh, while you're on your trip, uh, when you're done playing at the end of your trip or in the middle of your trip, you could also uh, ask to speak to a host as well. And then uh, you, I think you generally ask at the Players Club or sometimes they have their own casino host desk that you can go straight to. So some, you don't have to always wait until the end of the trip. And then um, the other cool thing is that like normally if you just play on a player's club, like with your player's club card, you'll get the, the mailers in the mail where there's, they'll say, uh, you know, come stay two nights for free, have $20 a day in food, $10 a day in free play or whatever. If you have a host, what they can do is they can provide a, they, they have like their own sort of discretionary fund that they can use to comp other stuff. Like Steve and I used to play at the, uh, the hard rock in Las Vegas before it closed. And we played there, and we only uh, we weren't big players. I mean, we were just playing dollar, dollar uh, eight five bonus poker, and uh, the hosts there treated us extremely well. And um, we'd always go. They'd put us up in a nice hotel room, and then at the end of the trip, he would. They, what they do is they tell you, charge everything to your room, and then at the end of the trip, either the day you check out or that evening, the host goes in, looks, sees how much you played, and then they'll they'll comp off the, uh, the charges to your room based on, on what you played. And uh, when Steve and I go, we, uh, it's normally for business, so we, we don't get too crazy. But I've uh, gone before on a personal trip and just sort of tried to push the envelope just to see how much he would uh, comp, our host would comp off. And it was, uh, they were very generous. Even, uh, even on trips where it was just me and I was playing by myself, the hosts were still very generous. Weren't you buying things in the gift shop and charging them to the room? Oh, yeah. I think I racked up like a – the host ended up – he he comped $1,000 in charges. I was buying stuff in the gift shop. I was out at the pool drinking, getting full pitchers, like the $25 giant drinks and everything. Just I was, I was going crazy, and he was just at the end of the trip. He's like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, and yeah. so some properties will – you know, they care if you have a winning trip or a losing trip. Mm-hmm. Um, so the last time I was at the South Point, I, I had done really well downtown, went to the South Point. I think I played over the course of a weekend, you know, thirty-five dollars or $40,000 of coin in. Um, I ended up down about a thousand bucks, which for that amount of coin in is, is not bad. Um, but after that trip, the South Point now sends me just r- absurd mailers with, with um, great dining options. I get an email from a host about every month asking me if I want to come. Um, I got an email offering uh, one level of room free, emailed my host, and I said, if I did come, could I get, you know, your junior suite? Um, So some properties care how much you win or lose. Um, Some don't. That's kind of anecdotal, and it depends on the host. It's something that as a player, you'll just develop a feel for um, as you go to different properties. Um, but, but do keep that in mind as well, that if you, if you have a trip where, where you do amazingly, and you know, I've had trips at the Four Queens where I walked away with $2,500 or $3,000 of their money, at the end of the trip, they were like, okay, we'll comp your room, but uh, and maybe 50 bucks of the food, but you're going to need you to pay for the rest of the food. Um, but that, that's fine. If you walk away a winner, um, you know, you usually don't mind uh, picking up some of your food tab yourself. So that is something to keep in mind. It's not true for all casinos, but some casinos do, you know, are, are not going to comp you a whole lot if you walk away a big winner. All right. One thing I wanted to mention, if you're, if you've been playing video poker for a while and you know 
you have an idea how much you're going to put through when you go visit a casino. And you can contact a host ahead of time. A lot of casino sites, their websites, they'll have a page, meet our hosts or something, or contact the casino marketing department. You can find someone there or a phone number that you can call and speak to them and say, hey, I'm going to be out there for three days next month. I'm, uh, I'm, I like to play video poker. Can you tell me uh, what I need to get uh, RF&B, room food and beverage? Or what do I need to, how much action do you need to, to get your room covered? Now, Matt, have, have you, didn't you have a story? You did something like this somewhere? Yeah, I actually did. Well, like I said, we always used this. Every time Steve and I used to go to Vegas, we'd always stay at the Hard Rock. Now the Hard Rock's closed. And I was planning a trip to Vegas with some friends. And I was looking for a new place to play. And they wanted to stay on the strip. And so what I did was, is I went on vpfree2.com and I looked at all the strip properties to see who had the best video poker and who sort of, uh, I looked at their players club stats to see who treated video poker players well. And I looked at, I forget where it was. I think it was the SLS or the Sahara or whatever the hell it's called now. It changes names so often. But I had uh, went on there. I saw they had a good video poker game that I wanted to play. I think it was like, it was like quarter, Quarter ten, it was like quarter five play or quarter 10 play deuces wild. And it was a good deuces wild game. So I emailed the host and said, listen, you know, uh, I always stay at the hard rock. They're now closed. I was like, I usually play dollar, uh, uh, eight, five bonus poker. I'm trying to make a trip. Do you think you can help me out here? And the guy called me back and was like, I don't know if he actually looked up my, uh, play somehow or, what but he called me back and said that absolutely he's like anytime you want to come i'll put you in he's like you can pick whatever tower you want to stay in and i mean i'm not even that big of a i i play a bit but i'm not that big of a player and he was like yeah you can take any any hotel tower you want so you can call ahead of time if you know how much you play and if you go often and know how much you play you can sort of get a but one thing i should say is that um there's called uh, stiffing. Anytime you, you go, if you, it's called stiffing the casino. It's, uh, if they comp you and you go and you end up not playing, I believe if you, uh, ahead of time, if you call a host and they uh, book you the room, if you don't play, I think that sometimes they can end up charging you for the room if you haven't, if you stiff them. So uh, make sure that you, when you call the host and speak to them, make sure you don't exaggerate your play or it come, could come back to bite you in the ass afterwards. And, and it's different for different hosts. Some hosts I've found, you can call them and they can give you a rough idea, but in terms of promising you anything, sometimes they wanna see some play. Um, so uh, the down, all of the downtown casinos, um, they have wanted to see some play before they mentioned you know, exactly what, um, uh, what, what their expectations were. So it just, it's depends on the property. This one's kind of uh, subjective, but you know, the, the worst thing that, that can happen when you call to ask is, is that they say no. So you just have mm -hmm. to be willing to be kind of persistent and have that countenance about you that, you know, you're going to put in the, the time to shop around and find you the places that are going to give you the best value for your play. And I think that, that just kind of ropes it all together that, you know, you really, you've, you've got to take all these, can, all these things into consideration and find the casino that works for you, for your level of play, for the kind of comps that you like, you know, some places might have better restaurants, but not great rooms. Some places might be vice versa. So just find what works for you as a player. Um, and, and again, you know, you don't want to chase comps. You want to just try to get the most comps for the play that you would be doing uh, otherwise. All right, that's great. Those were Spencer Music with his four tips for getting more comps as a video poker player. And I, I never did tell people what you do in real life for a living. Can you want to tell them? Sure. So I am a, a sports journalist at Xinhua News Agency. That's kind of like China's version of the Associated Press. Um, I'm here in the U.S. on an extended break um, until the coronavirus situation um, is, is, is over. And uh, I've not had a chance to get back to the casinos uh, yet. I'm, I'm hoping to. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if, if you just Google my name, you can see a lot of my um, sports writing and, uh, and some more information about me there. Also, you know, I have LinkedIn, all of those things. But um, in terms of, of gambling, uh, I really appreciate the chance to, uh, to come on your platform and share my knowledge. It's, it's okay, and, and you also, on the American Casino Guidebook website, you wrote uh, our, 
our article on um, craps, how to play craps, which is a very lengthy article. If someone, if, you, if you're confused about the game of craps, it's a good article, explains everything you need to know about playing craps. So Spencer, thank you very much for joining us today. Absolutely, thank you for having me guys. And that does it for our video on how to increase your comps when playing video poker. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. And don't forget to uh, click the subscribe button, hit the bell, and turn on all notifications so you never miss any of our other great videos. Yeah, thanks again for watching and best wishes for good luck in the casinos.